Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you, that your prophets be found true. Hear the prayers of your servant and of your people, Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. If Christ raised from the dead is what has been preached, how can some of you be saying that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, Christ himself cannot have been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is useless and your believing it is useless. Indeed, we are shown up as witnesses who have committed perjury before God because we swore in evidence before God that he had raised Christ to life. For if the dead are not raised, Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, you are still in your sins. And what is more serious, all who have died in Christ have perished. If our hope in Christ has been for this life only, we are the most unfortunate of all people. But Christ has in fact been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Lord, hear a cause that is just. Pay heed to my cry. Turn your ear to my prayer. No deceit is on my lips. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. I am here and I call. You will hear me, O God. Turn your ear to me. Hear my words. Display your great love. You whose right hand saves your friends from those who rebel against them. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. As for me, in my justice, I shall see your face and be filled when I awake with the sight of your glory. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus made his way through towns and villages preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. 
With him went the twelve, as well as certain women who had been cured of evil spirits and ailments. Mary surnamed the Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa, Susanna, and several others who provided for them out of their own resources. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we begin to see that when our Lord was moving through the towns and villages proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, that there was quite a group of people with him. The twelve plus uh, uh, another group as well of, of, of women. So we know that there was, you know, maybe 20 or two dozen or so people in this kind of entourage moving around. Uh, no doubt their arrival in a village or a town would have made a, uh, a big impact. People would start talking and wondering what's going on. Um, but all of it, of course, was centred on the Lord Jesus and his proclamation of the good news of the kingdom because he had come to proclaim that good news, the news ultimately of the forgiveness of sins and of eternal life. Now, it's that good news that our sins can be forgiven, have been forgiven, and that uh, the gift of eternal life can be ours through the resurrection of Christ. That's the good news that we rejoice in here today. Those who can gather at Mass and those who are with us um, on the internet. It says that uh, these people, the, the, the followers, those with Jesus, provided for the group out of their own resources. So when they went from town to town, they, they were not a burden on those to whom they were bringing the good news. Rather, they, they brought with them uh, the gift of the presence of Jesus and the gospel that he carries. Well, uh, we take these things together. The first reading, which um, speaks of our hope in the resurrection. And the, the gospel passage that, that uh, speaks of the, uh, the working of the proclamation of the kingdom by our Lord. This good news has been proclaimed to us we rejoice in it. We remember that our sins have been forgiven through his saving death on the cross and that we look forward to the resurrection. St. Paul, writing to the Corinthians, was, was warning them not to lose sight of their faith in the resurrection because it's all too easy for us to get caught up in this part of our lives and to forget that this is only the beginning of what God offers and that we are living here and now not just for the here and now but that we have a wonderful future through the saving death and resurrection of Christ and so we should be a people of hope since we believe in the resurrection and we should be a people like the Twelve and those who accompanied our Lord as he went around proclaiming the Gospel. We should be a people uh, who point to Jesus and draw strength from him and, please God, by the example of our own lives, can draw others towards him so that they too may come to, to believe in the resurrection of the dead a message which our world most certainly needs. To believe that through Jesus Christ, 
eternal life can be ours. That we live not just for now, but we live for eternity in God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. How precious is your mercy, O God! The children of men seek shelter in the shadow of your wings.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.